Today I fucked up by saying yes to an open relationship. So here goes. I have been together with my woman for 15 years plus we have been together since 17 or so. We both had a very hard upbringing, and we had it tough, we fought through life together and it has been hard. When we finally think at last son is smiling on us, the world throws shit at us. I always say jokingly it's karma, sometimes I actually believes it, I kid you not. So for two years now I think, she has made small comments about, will we ever get tired of each other and be with other people behind our backs, but alas we are not that type to do that. We have always been up front, open, supporting and always there for each other, when nobody else is. I fucking love her, yes I tell her that. So we had a wholehearted talk last week, and we agreed it could be fun with an open relationship, and we set some ground rules, it is only for fun etc. We have never been with others, and you know YOLO. Don't get me wrong I'm not angry or anything, she is special, one of a kind, I just want her to experience that for herself, give her confidence in herself. And OMG it is working, she has a massive boost and been on multiple dates with benefits. She has also got a lot of friend. She always comes home and gives me the greats fucking you know whatever, not gonna lie. I actually think our relationship has grown and we are more into other, weird I guess, but you know love is weird. So here comes the fuck up about this whole thing. I realize nobody likes me, I got zero friends and all my relatives has died, and this dating is not for me it is really hard I don't envy anybody out there searching desperately for love. And don't you worry I am not suicidal or depressed. I have a great job, we have two great kids, and a special woman loving me with all her heart. But I just want somebody to notice me, if that makes sense, I am a sweet respectful person and I just want somebody to say that to me. Too long did not read. Saying yes to an open relationship, realizing nobody besides my kids and my woman loves me. I just want one friend. All my relatives have died. Try dating outside of your family, op. You might have better luck? Hey, I have an idea. Let your wife try to hook you up. You know no one, she knows a lot of people, it might be fun. Let's be real, if a woman wants to sleep around, it's really easy when she's not holding the guys to relationship, future spouse standards. I feel like a lot of people are misunderstanding the tone of your post. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't feel bad about your wife's half of the open relationship. Only that your own prospects are limited. I'm going to jump off half of another comment, get an escort or hop on a swinging community forum. The normal dating scene of singles generally excludes men in open relationships. Tons of apps on your phone are designed for this. You could even be honest with your wife about this and she might be able to help out if you still want to explore the open relationships. At least from what I've heard, open relationships tend to work out better if both partners are experiencing others at the same time. No offense op, but I feel like I've seen many posts from men about their woman wanting an open relationship and the man agrees to it to make her happy. And she goes off and has fun while the guy just sits at home and realizes he actually doesn't want that. Do what's best for yourself op, hope you can figure it all out. Probably just me but knowing that multiple guys are fucking my wife would drive me up a wall. Oh my bro few. It sucks that the open relationship isn't working for you. Especially since it sounds like you're a good man who's genuinely happy for your wife. I don't read jealousy or resentment in your post, just sadness and some regret. You're not suffering from the typical open relationship buyer's remorse guys get a lot. It's not about not being able to get dates though I'm sure that stings. You've discovered something fundamental missing in your life. A lack of a personal life outside your immediate family and career. You're really hurting and your wife needs to know that so she can help and support you. If your relationship is strong enough to open up then it's strong enough to return to monogamy. Today I fucked up by nearly giving the HVAC repair guy a heart attack when he saw a coffin in our crawl space. Requisite. This happened a few years ago, but I'm still laughing and feeling guilty simultaneously. A little background. My husband and I are Halloween fanatics. We've built so much and we collected so much that we're developing a business plan to have a seasonal Halloween business. One of the things we built is a oversized coffin, with the part that would house the upper portion of the body open, and we affixed a skeleton and foam insulation, so we use it as a beer cooler during parties. Skelly, as we call him comes out for every party. Christmas party? Skelly wears a Santa hat. For my daughter's wedding reception, he wore a bridal veil. Springtime, he wore bunny ears. You get the idea. Anyway, in our house at that time, a 1920s craftsman, we only had storage under the house, in an unlit crawl space, so you have to use a flashlight. 
so Skelly and a bunch of other decoration totes were stored in the crawl space. We also have a form that looks like a person that has been wrapped as if by a spider. An huge spider, a plastic wrapped body, along with a bunch of other larger skeletons, that won't fit into the bins. So, the first really cold day of the year, the heat goes out, of course. But we see an HVAC repair van up the street. My husband goes and talks with the gentleman, and the repair guy agrees to come up to our house after he's done where he is. He arrives a few minutes later, and my husband shows him to the crawl space, where the unit is. And husband returns to the living room. And then we hear a scream. Like a blood-curdling scream. At the same time, we both say, S-K-E-L-L-I-E, -L -L -E, and run down to the crawl space, where this poor sap is on his backside, with eyes as big as saucers. We had forgotten about Skelly, and the poor guy saw Skelly, then some of our other stuff. He must have thought we were serial killers for a second. Anyway, guy recovered, we all laughed, as much more than him, and he fixed the heating problem. Too long did not read. HVAC repair guy nearly had a heart attack because we forgot to tell him about the coffin, skeletons and other bodies in the crawl space. Edit. Found an old pic of Skelly at a party. Edit 2. Wow. This is getting some attention, and I'm so thankful for the awards. I thought this would be like my other today I fucked up post, and get largely ignored. Thanks again. It's weird, but I think I would find an empty coffin more ominous than a filled one. Poor Skelly. Lol do you have pics? Edit. Pick. Talk about a rough day at work. Lol. My realtor had a similar experience during the home inspection last time I sold my house. Fortunately she'd gotten to know me and after a moment she just started laughing. Had to explain to the home inspector though. You didn't fuck up. He's probably been to lots of houses with weird stuff inside. Also, even funeral homes need their HVAC repaired. You should have played along. Just casually walk up to the entrance to the crawl space and poke your heads in. Boy Dunn found Skelly. Seal, I am up. Then closed it on him. Kind of reminds me of a time working at Los Angeles airport. One of the baggage busters, an Irishman, went into the cargo hold. A minute later a casket was put on the conveyor belt and went into the cargo hold. About 3.87 seconds later the Irishman comes rocketing out of the cargo hold, shaking like a leaf. T-I-F-U. My son is a better man than I am. My son. Better man than me. So T-I-F-U. It was more like a month ago but things just got better so. I am an electrician and I carry a big bag full of sharp tools. It weighs at least 50 pounds. I normally leave it in my truck instead of bringing it into the house because it is such a hassle. Well, this particular day I had to fix some stuff my kids had broken. Such as light switches, rheostat, and outlets. It took so long to fix everything I ended up leaving the bag next to the dining room table after I was finished so I could eat dinner, then shower and go to bed. I have to wake up at 3 a.m. so I can be to work in time at 7. It was already 11 p.m. I finally got in the bed and my alarm goes off almost immediately. I get up and my wife already has me coffee made. I step in the dining room to grab my tools and I notice something on the floor. I thought my bag was leaking oil or something. It was very dim in the room so I cut on my phone light and saw the most blood I've seen since my kids were born. I immediately yell for my wife and we start flipping on all the light switches. Our house had been attacked by Dracula. The couch had to be replaced, as well as the dining room carpet, and the hallway carpet. The bathroom had to be scrubbed like it was a operating room gone wrong. As my wife and I are trying to find the source of the blood my three-year-old son hands me his finger. My boy cut his pinky finger off with my cable splicing knife. I feel so bad. I should have put my tools away. I asked him what happened and he looked at me and said. I go to work like daddy so he can sleep. He then walked over to my tools and hands me the splicing knife. He never cried. But I sure as hell did. Too long did not read. My son cut off his pinky finger with one of my tools because I didn't put them away. That kid is metal as fuck if he didn't shed a single tear. Holy hot damn. He cut his entire pinky finger off. That's too much. Were they able to reattach it? Hey up. Parent guilt is hard. And you're definitely going to feel this one for a while. Please be kind to yourself, accidents happen, try not to dwell on the feelings of what you should have done. Your kid sounds like a total sweetheart by the way. Is this for real? Wow. Well. I'm so so sorry. I know it's really bad but it absolutely could have been worse. You're going to feel like shit forever, but he's going to be okay. I am so sorry man. 
How's his hand doing? I've got a young daughter not far from that age who doesn't really understand work yet and just done a 98 hours week with little sleep. I go to work like daddy so he can sleep, has me crying on the sofa. Hope he's doing okay man. Holy shit. But his finger was safely reattached, and lessons were learned, so that's good. Today I fucked up by accidentally telling my new boss I love her. Obligatory this happened minutes, so I got a new job just the other day. Today was my first day of work at this job. I'm a bit young so this is my first job and my first 8 hour shift. I went to text my girlfriend that I love her and that I'm going in so she didn't try to text while I was at work. I am going to activate do not disturb anyway. So I send her the text and I am about to put my phone down when I notice that her icon wasn't right. Then I was how my recent messages mentioned a shirt then I realized that it was my boss. I proceeded to apologize and that the text wasn't meant for her and sent it to my girlfriend while attaching a funny story for her. My boss has not responded yet. Too long did not read. I meant to tell my girlfriend I love her and I accidentally told it to my boss. I am a boss and get these once a month lol. Don't worry about it. Meet me in the copy room in 5 minutes. My girlfriend was having anxiety attacks one night and I was holding her through crying episodes until 2 a.m. She had just lost her job and was insanely depressed. So the next morning while I'm warming up the work truck I send her a paragraph long text about how much I love her and how amazing she is, and to keep staying strong because we'll make it through anything. Hit send and immediately see I send it to my boss instead. I sent him a text that said, please disregard that was supposed to be for my gf. That was 8 months ago, my boss still gives me shit for it and asks, why haven't you proposed dirty brown wt I thought we had something special. We're two straight dudes. So worst case scenario your boss constantly gives you crap for it. She probably shrugged it off. If it was written the way you were saying she probably realized it wasn't for her. Have done this before and used a very cheeky pet name for my manager that was intended for my gf. She, my manager, then decided to make a custom name tag for me using that very same pet name. It was borderline not safe for work and everyone thought it was hilarious, including the gf. Could be worse you could have sent a dick pic rolling on the floor laughing. Would have been funny if she replied with, I love you too. You definitely send the apology and funny story to your girlfriend not your boss? Hee <laughs> hee.